Hello, and welcome from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. The grass here in Lancaster is so green and lush, it looks like fur. It's like pretend grass. Does not look like the St. Augustine grass that we have back in Florida. Life is a highway. I want to ride it all night long. That's a lie. I do not want to ride it all night long. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 111, from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, say hi down below. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, and we do product reviews, and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So we are currently on our way to visit my mom in New York. We're back in the recliners. We're, we're actually sitting sort of on a couch. Yeah. And uh, let's see. So yesterday, we stopped at a winery in South Carolina. Beautiful. It was a beautiful place. Um, we picked up a couple bottles of wine for my mom. We had a good night's sleep. It was a really, really nice harvest host. I mean, yes. they even offered electric and water and sewer for we a small them, fee. We took them up on it. Yeah. So now, I know that this is our keto channel, but if you don't know what harvest host is, harvest host is this membership program, and it's cheap. It's like sixty bucks a year. A year. And it allows you to stay at thousands of. Like wineries, breweries, farms. distilleries, farms, attractions, golf courses. golf courses, like any family farms around the country for free. Yeah. And the places that you stay at, they there's no, like, they don't get any compensation from Harvest Host or anything. They, Harvest Host charges like 60 bucks a year just as kind of like... Hey, we're going to coordinate all this. But it makes you know that they exist because yes. we would never have known that this place existed yeah. except for through Harvest Host. Yeah. So you get to stay like on their property somewhere and in return, you go and patronize their business. Like, like we bought cheese. But yeah, we bought cheese where we're staying right now. We're staying in Lancaster, Pennsylvania we at a little country market. Anyway. Right. Um, you buy a bottle of wine, we bought coffee at the one place, there's alpaca farms, all different kind of Take places. Take an alpaca home. It's, you're not taking an alpaca home. Dang it. it. But they're really cool, and again, you get to explore different places that you would never know even existed. Really cool. So we love it, and so if you are into camping or RVing or anything like that and are interested in Harvest House, there's a link down below, and that gets you, I think, 15% off of your year's membership, and the cool thing is, is they're about to actually have a price increase Ugh. If you lock in now, you pay that same amount every year, even if they oh. have other increases. So okay. if in five years they've doubled the price, you're still paying what you paid when you signed up. And that's I, pretty cool. I, that's really cool. And to put How many it, companies do that? Nobody. 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 <laughs> and what's cool about it is the fact that we stay very cheap at like state campgrounds mostly. Yep. That's mostly what we do. Yep. Well, it's like $30 a night for a state campground. $60 for the whole year for Harvest Host. So right. that like kind of puts it in perspective yeah. of just how reasonable it is. And there are more and more people that are starting to RV. So sometimes it can be a little challenging to find a place to stay. So yeah. it's nice to have these places. But this has been a great way to travel. So never about the camping stuff, except for I love the fact that we're on keto because pretty much here's what we've eaten for the last two days that we drive. Big turkey. Eggs. And hard boiled eggs. Yeah. Well, and not even a lot of it. And I'm not hungry. I am not either. And I wanted to ask you, what are some other things? Because this is the first like really long distance trip that we have 1, taken. miles. Like in a vehicle since keto. Like we've flown on a plane since keto. That's right. But we haven't done like this, you know, multi-day trip. 
And I have to say, the first thing that I've noticed that's been a huge difference for me is... I pee every hour. <laughs> well, that. I think we were doing that anyway. Oh, okay. Um, is I used to get so much pain in my legs from staying in a stationary position. Right. I got super swollen calves. I would always get like a heat rash type of thing. Right. Um, and it was painful to go to bed yeah. that, those nights. And I don't feel that at all. Like, I feel really, really good. I mean, I get antsy and I want to get out of the car. I haven't experienced that with this, you on this trip. That's different, though, than being in pain. Yeah, but I'm still alive. Usually by hour, like, seven, like, she's ready to divorce me on this. Because I think that... And we've done... We did 12 hours the first day and 10 hours the second day. Now, that's getting in the car to leaving, but... So, basically, turning the RV... Listen, I get nine, eight to nine miles per gallon. Yeah. I only have a like 30 gallon gas tank. So we have to stop like every 150 miles for fuel. And we gotta pee which is anyway. perfect because I got to pee anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, so you've been getting, we get, we have to stop every, like every say like hour and a half to two hours. And that's like 10 minutes. So we, if they are, it tax two hours on. So if the map says eight hours, it becomes a 10 hour trip. But you have like been really, really good. Usually you're going bonkers. Well, here's the thing though. I just was thinking about, I think that the way that we used to do road trips and stuff when we were pre-keto and we're eating all of that garbage food, what do you usually do oh when you're on gosh. a trip? You eat a bunch of sugary nonsense, but we then- We bought a suitcase of White Castle the last time we made this drive. But then you rev up with all that sugar and you have no place to go. Yeah. You have no place for this like ball of disgusting you're right. energy. You're trapped there. All you do is get like nasty and short-tempered with the people in the car. Right. It smells terrible because everybody gets super gassy. We have not had any gas. I mean, I know that's TMI, yeah. but like there's no gas in our car. It's not like all- We also have no air in the car. Right smelly now. i know so we, we we hit some traffic today in virginia and then all of a sudden i'm like it's getting kind of stuffy in here and i reach down and the blower is blowing but there's no real air coming out so and and it's like trickling out of all the vents so somewhere the air dampener is stuck yeah and uh, i gotta figure that one out because it's gonna be miserable but you don't want to have to figure it out when you're like Pulling a 30-foot trailer yeah. on a two-lane highway in the yeah. middle of Pennsylvania. Yeah. But I'm excited. We we, we, we like being here in Lancaster. Unfortunately, it's nice and cool, at least. It's going to be Sunday morning, so a lot of the places are closed where we can kind of go around. I'm hoping maybe on the way out. On the way can, back. We can get a couple things. But we may, we're may we definitely going to stop somewhere in this area on the way back. I think it's adorable. that Like, I love that they honor Sunday. Like, yes. I think it's super awesome. It's yeah. rare. Yeah. This whole place is shut down. I, I just want to, like, when this is done, go try some of those different cheeses. They have, like, a buffalo cheese and a chive cheese. We got just about all of them. Yeah, and they had some fresh eggs, and we got some fresh hot dogs. We're going to have some hot dogs and cheese for dinner tonight. You would think that we would be, like, done with hard-boiled eggs, but I'm not. No. I'm lo I'm loving them. <laughs> you did them in the Instapot. I did them in the Instapot 15 minutes at 375 degrees. You seem Perfect. to be fighting a yawn you couldn't possibly be tired after what 24 hours of driving no not really I, i'm honestly it's a not. little it's just like Once it's you everything down. going on and then we're gonna get up in the morning tomorrow we're gonna head over to my mom i'm really excited we're gonna film seeing her i gotta tell terry like can you have the camera we're gonna give her a little text like okay we're coming down like, yeah and and we're gonna go with that i'm so. gonna i'm i want to make sure you go in first so she sees you first i'm gonna have my little my phone my iphone too just to like back yeah, up but she'll camera. be happy to see you she wants. <laughs> okay, you want to get into comments? Yes, please. So, I, before we get into comments, is there anything we're going to talk about? Because, you know, we're starting a new challenge this Saturday before the next Keto on the Couch. Wow, I can't believe that. Yes, we, um, we'll um we be starting May in Motion, mm -hmm. Stay in Motion, because we've got momentum going and we don't want to lose it. Let me tell you, I felt so proud of myself. We got here in time before we, we came in here for us to film this, I got five miles in. I'm so proud of you. Because we're in the middle of doing this. And, and you had some really cool photos and like all of the different things here on the plants and the flowers and the architecture. Let me tell you, this five miles went faster than any I think I've ever done because it was so beautiful to look around and see 
just all new things. So yeah, we're gonna have a fun challenge every single day. It will be a movement challenge, but you're gonna get creative with but it. But this one is different. Okay, yeah. so this isn't like working out with Bronson working out. No. So, which speaking of, if you're interested in continuing to work out with Bronson following his training program. We do. So, uh, I'm, there, I'm put a link down below and he asked if we wanted to be an affiliate and I said, I don't really want to make any money off of this at all because it is important for us that people get moving yes. in one way or another and work on their lean mass because the more lean mass you have, the easier it is for your body to burn and utilize fat, which keeps you skinny and helps you lose even more weight and bottom line keeps you stronger and makes you healthier. So if you use the code following the link below to crazy ketos, we make no money on it. Make it clear. Time. We don't make any money off of it. And we're we don't need to do this, but we wanted to in offer you. it. So what we told them was whatever you would give your affiliate for using that code, which is, is five dollars, I want you to give it back to them. So if you decide you do want to work out with Bronson, okay, no obligation. He's still gonna be like part of our community. Yeah. He's still going to be in our Facebook group. But if you want to do even more. It's like randomly <laughs> tapping If in. you want to continue working out with him and him coaching you and be part of his community, use the code 2CrazyKetos and that's going to get you $5 off every month that you're part of his group. And it's the regular price is 40 bucks, So you pay $35 a month. You get a training program Personal every single day. For, for thirty access five to dollars him a month. and his community. So just something you might want to think about. But so the challenge is things like park the furthest away when you go to the store or go out to your mailbox twenty times in a day. So it's not working out kind of challenge. Yeah, but it's well it's like moving. It's moving. Like for and I want you to get really creative and I want you to share what you're doing. Like right. for instance, one day is water. Okay. So you could do water aerobics. You could use two water bottles as like weights and use it that way. Like right. you could go to the beach, you could go swimming in the pool. There's like all kinds of things. So you just have to find some creative way to incorporate water that day, but there's lots of fun things. And I think it's going to be a, a really good time. Yeah. Let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with comments. And we're back. But we forgot about the contest. Yeah, there's more. So we have the giveaway from last week's Kid on the Couch. Yep. We have the Keto Chow, where we're giving away two peach. Two and two. Two, and two. lime. Take that, Chuck And Lurie. two of the apple pie flavor, which is no longer available. I love it. So we're going to pick three winners. Uh, we're in the rig right now, so it's kind of difficult for us to share everything on the screen. I promise we'll be but honest. But we're going to screenshot everything. So uh, we got to pick a winner. 260 comments. You ready? Here we go. Pick a winner. <gasps> Becky, Becky Cannon. Cannon. So she said, I would really like to try the Keto Chow. Well, you're about to, Miss Becky. Okay, next winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Jenna Jean Marie. Marie. I think, oh, I think it is Jenna. Said, happy Monday fun day. Watching the Brie play. I love you. Love Perfect Keto. Love Keto Chow. This is a great Monday. Well, not as good as this Monday, because this Monday you just won. <laughs> I love it. Okay, and we have one more, and the winner is... Shelly Shelley Terrell. Terrell. Said, also planner, but I love the freedom our RV gives us. Oh, nice. Would love to do all of the national parks. That is something that I would really that like to do, is do national parks. Definitely on your bucket list. That is definitely on my bucket list. We just need to be able to not have to have a job at home. Oh, yeah. That would be the good thing. Congratulations to all the winners. So here's what you guys need to do. You need to send me an email at joe at twocrazyketos.com with all of your shipping information and your full name, and we will send it right out. Now, please remember, this is not coming from Keto Chow. It is coming directly from us. From we won't like the stash. package, we promise. Yeah. Now, also, while you're doing all of this, everybody, make sure you head down below and you, number one, subscribe to the channel because it's one of the only things in life that are free oh is subscribing to Two Crazy Keto. Goodness. Also, hit the like button because that's going to really help build the channel. It also lets us know what you're interested in watching. But most importantly, you want to hit the little bell button so that you're notified when we upload a video because this week, at the end of this week, we have a video coming out that you are going to want to see as soon as it comes out. Should I tell them what the topic is? Sure. Because for a month, we've been telling you, you absolutely need to get the Keto Chow Club Box. 
So now we're going to tell you what's in it. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Because it's going to be May 1st at the end of the week. So we're going to tell everybody what's in it. Not right now. Not right now. That's why they have to hit the bell button. Because I'm not going to tell them when I'm going to tell them. That's why. So let's talk about this week's Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. It's a good one. And yeah, there's no slide for this one. But this person actually met up with Bronson Dant who is the person who's doing all our challenges and our, and our training for us. And uh, they went out to eat and he challenged her to do his workout program. The same one that we're talking about earlier with the $39 a month, like the CrossFit training. There are a lot of ambulances here. I know. I, I hope everybody's Are there a lot okay. of people getting run over by horse buggies? I hope not. <laughs> I know, right? Vicious Lancaster. So they met up and he challenged her to do the workout live. It's Renee. Yes. Renee Noonan, Parrothead Renee, and she was absolutely amazing. Talk about inspirational. Talk about leading by example. She let everybody know, hey, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to share your workouts. And also, it's easy to do. It's not just something that somebody who is a trainer for a living can do, but we can all get out there and get moving. And let me tell you, she motivated me. Well, I was just going to ask you, did she motivate you enough, though, that when we get together with Bronson in May, for you to work out live with him? Oh, man, calling me out like that. Yeah, because it's not motivating me to do that. (laughs) Probably. I I feel like I... Renee makes me want to be a better woman. Oh, really? Yes. And I I mean, she just was like so powered up. Well, you could take my spot then. You know what the other thing that was cool? I'm going to run the other way. You know what the other thing that was cool? What? Was the fact that... By watching that video, I was like, oh, yeah, you can work out outside. You don't have to be inside of a gym. And also, the soundtrack for their workout was not like boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. It was like what they want to hear. Right. And I like that, too, because a lot of times you're thinking to yourself, if I'm part of, like, a gym, I'm subject to, like, whatever, like, rage machine music that they want to listen to. And she had, they had awesome. It was like Santana. Right. I'm like, I was loving it. Right. Okay, so let's get into our subscriber of the week. Now, if you're new to our channel, we have a Facebook family group, which if you're not a member of it, why not? Why not? Use the link down what below. Are you doing? When, when you go in, hit the little subscribe button. Go ahead, follow that link if you're not a member of it. Go join our Facebook family group. There are some awesome people over there putting up posts about recipes, things that they're struggling with, achievements. But most importantly, their success story. And we ask you guys, please share your story. Not because we need content, but because your story is going to motivate somebody. And you're going to feel better when you share. Yep. So this week's subscriber of the week is Betraya. Betraya. And she said, I was originally inspired by Stephanie, who posted a while back and shared feelings on how sometimes you change so much that you don't recognize yourself. Yeah. I certainly resonate with that so hard. I have a ton of pictures. I don't have a ton of pictures because I was so ashamed and miserable and unhealthy. It was hard for me to allow someone to snap a shot. So the ones that do exist are rare. I treasure them now because they do remind me of how far I've come. And I hope you are willing to post some of your inspirational pics. Awesome. I find them all very motivating to see people changing their lives and feeling healthier. Anyway, here's a collage of me looking fancy. 2017 after I already had lost 35 pounds. Wow. And can you believe it? This pic that I found is so embarrassing when published is it was published in a magazine. Then in 2019, New York uh, NYE getting ready to go out and the pic you've all seen before. But since I love the awesome thread Christopher sent, it was worth the repeat. Aww. Holiday time 2020. What a difference. My arms are still big flappy wings. Me but too. I am proud to say that I have gone from 21 around to 15 inches. Wow. And I hope the one day I will finish shrinking up that skin I have around my arms. But I am fine if it doesn't happen. Yes. And look at these pictures. Oh, Matreya. Like, what a difference. Oh, my gosh. What a How difference. beautiful. I mean, lovely in every single picture. Your beautiful, beautiful face. But, yeah. I mean, you absolutely look like so young. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, you, seriously, look at that. Wow. I love that dress, by the way. Like, P.S. <laughs> Let's get into comments. Okay, so 
Uh, first comment from YouTube is from Patty. Hey, Patty. Said, thanks, y'all, for sharing your journey. I have no one in my circle of life who eats the proper human diet, so it can be hard. Great to join in here and hear from other people. I love just touching base with the family every day. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to go visit your mom and sister, yep. and they're not really keto, but I don't feel like, oh, I'm nervous about this interaction. And if I do feel, like, strange at any point when I'm with somebody that doesn't eat keto, like, I'm afraid, am, am I eating too much meat in front of them and I'm going to offend them or something, then... I can just kind of go into the Facebook family group and you get that inspiration and encouragement that you need. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you don't have family at home, that is okay. If you don't have friends at home, go just make sure you're be a part of our Facebook family group because they're all going to treat you like family. Yes. You know, you have our group on Friday nights, go over Heath and Shelly live the stream. Horde. It's like, it's literally like going out to dinner with Heath and Shelly. Yes. And you I want mean, to. We get on there every Friday awesome. night pretty much. And it's kind of cool. They're just cooking and chatting with everybody. You know, one person's doing the cooking, one person is just kind of monitoring the chat and just kind of sit and talk and it's literally like going out to dinner. And, yeah. and it's the family that's been developing through Two Crazy Ketos on the Facebook group and everybody there is going to be there to support you. So make sure you go join that if you're not a member already. Yep. So the next one is from Jill. Hey, Jill. Jill said, watching the replay, no coffee at 6 p.m. Uh, Sad face. Sad face for sure. I need to plan to travel. I don't do well just winging it. Jill, I am with you. It has been really challenging. I'm going to tell you right now, if we did not have Harvest Host, I would be way more like freaking out because Harvest Host, it's like you you can check in the day of. Right. Whereas a lot of times, like if we were booking a hotel room or if we were booking an RV spot, you would really need to have that booked like way ahead of time. Yeah, especially at this time of the year. I mean, now we do have the backup plan that you can go to Walmart. You could stay in a Cracker Barrel. There's, yeah. There's but lots I don't of want places to if that I don't you have can stay. To. Um, but what was nice about Harvest Host, again, and our whole thing was how far can we make it? Because what how if I can you go? What if I were to get tired? Again, I'm doing all of the driving, so it's like you know, if I'm gonna if I get tired, I want to be able to stop, so I don't want to have to book something. So we just the Harvest Host you just call and say, hey, do you have any availability? Can I come by? And they're like, yeah, come on. So this place here, we called the one place. They're like, hey. We have somebody staying here already tonight, but our friends right down the street and we, you know, they gave us a list of like three or four different places and we called this place and said, yeah, come on by. So it's a nice way to be able to travel. Are you proud of me that I have not like played a million songs at once, like switched the radio a gajillion times? That's another thing I didn't yes, do this no. trip. Oh yes, that's right. That's It's been one you, station and done. Do you put one station on and then... Listen to whatever shows up. Or are you like Rachel who constantly just flips and flips and flips and flips and flips and I'm flips? I'm a flipper. You're a flipper. I'm a flipper. Okay. I Next have, one. I could have my own dolphin show. <laughs> Next one's from Nancy. Hey, Nancy. Nancy said, I love road trips. We plan the basic route and then stop here and there along the way. That's kind of what we did. Uh, when we see something interesting, advertised. We love to plan the route to include presidential libraries. Oh, okay. I'm super jealous. The USA jealous. is beautiful and so are you too. Nancy, you're beautiful. Thank you for that. That is such a great idea because I love historical sites. Like yeah. I absolutely love knowing the history of where we're staying. And when you see all of these like beautiful old houses, especially once you get, you know, Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., Maryland, like all of these. It's like, I just want to pull over every five seconds because you know something amazing and historical happened Which here. Which is kind of like how, you know, like we'll probably treat the drive home more of like stopping more, but we want to get up and see my mom yeah. and, and make sure we have a few days with her. But, I mean, even stopping here in Lancaster, we really didn't know what we were going to do. We knew we wanted to drive through Pennsylvania. But we were like, where are we going to stop? And, that's, and we kind of like pulled up all the harvest hosts. We had a plan like... We want to drive eight to ten hours today so that we don't have a long drive on Sunday. Yeah, like four hours So tomorrow. that we can get in there relatively early. And it was just kind of like, look what's along the route, and that's where we're going to stop. So we planned a basic route, and then we said, we'll stop where we can find something. Yeah. Uh, next one's from Amy. Hey, Amy. Amy said, I'm a serious planner. So much so that I even planned the rest area stops when oh, planning my vacation. I love that. My sister is the exact opposite. So when we travel together, I go almost into convulsions Aww. because she's trying to throw off my travel plans. She's so evil. 
The only time that um, Joe gets freaked out like that is when I try to take the last bite of whatever he's eating on his plate because he has organized his last like three or four bites are perfectly planned. I cannot be the only person who does this. And he does not like that order disruptive. So like if if I would like something off of his plate. Don't touch my plate. Well, do it at the beginning of the meal when there's plenty still and he hasn't decided how to, it's going to end. You have to do it. You can't even do it at the beginning of the meal. You have to do it before I sit down to eat. Like I've sort of made my plate, but I haven't planned out my The second I sit down, uh -huh. I've got a plan. And and every meal <laughs> I have to, I have to plan what is the last bite. Okay. What do I want to end on? Do you plan your last bite? I do. You don't plan your last bite? No. Oh my gosh. Like we had I'm gonna ribs eat it. I plan to eat it all. We had ribs and this one was hard. So we had oh. beef ribs. Yeah. That with was hard. our homemade coleslaw. And I was going back and forth. What is the last bite going to be? Is it going to be the coleslaw? Is it going to be the beef rib? Aww. Is it going to be the fat from the beef rib? The fat from the or beef it, rib. Nope. It was the coleslaw. Really? It was yeah. the coleslaw. Because I love that coleslaw. It is so good. I just like hearing you say coleslaw. <laughs> Next one is from Josh. Hey, Josh. Said, I don't like to plan things. As a kid, we would pack the car and say where we're going on vacation. My wife hates it because she needs everything planned. Almost to having an itinerary. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that that we're very different in that. I, I'm loosened up a bit. A little bit. I've loosened up a bit, and I think it's made life better for you. Yeah. But I've also set a couple boundaries of, like, I need to have windows, Joe. I need to at least know what's going on in this window of time. And yeah. I will be available to you for this window, but, like, I can't be, like, we're going to be doing something in the afternoon. I need to get more specific than that. Well... I mean, see, I'm the kind of person that would want to wake up at 5 a.m. and say, hey, we're going to Universal today. No, don't do that to me. So now, and so she said to me, I need advance warning when you want to do something. Yes. So here's my new thing is I book campsites. I don't actually tell her, but I put it in. We have a joint calendar for Two Crazy Ketos uh -huh. on my phone and her phone and our, my computer and her computer. So I put it in there and it shows up automatically on our computer and then I could say, I did tell you. It's the squ it's the scheduling equivalent of, of dining, like dine and dash. Yeah. Like I it's did just tell dropped you. off if, at, yeah, if, your dash. If you don't look in your calendar and insist on using a silly paper thing all the time, I love that's my paper not my planner. Yeah, but I can't change your paper planner the only thing is at least my watch notifies me like hey sneaky sneak joe's trying to <laughs> throw something in your calendar are you okay with this next one is from heather hey heather heather said i would love to meet you guys up in central florida sometime me too although as an introvert i'm probably gonna back out no no you can't now do we're that. doing it no you can't do that no gives these backsies nobody is more of an introvert than us and i know that that's gonna sound weird but seriously before keto we're before this frienders. channel we like had no idea how to talk to people. No. We just didn't. We literally, we talked about what we'd walk with our head down. Please don't talk to us. When we went to KetoCom, we're like, nobody is going to want to talk to us. And if somebody does, I'm running the other direction. Right. Yeah. I mean, please, we are the last person to be afraid to talk to. No. Come I mean, on down. She says balls all the time. Balls. I mean, come on. <laughs> So yeah, please, you know, come come look for us. We'd love to hang out. Heather, I don't know if you know or not, but Joe has already put it into your planner. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I should clarify, I have a class B. Ooh. And if you don't know what a class B is, nice. that is like a van, like a regular van that has been converted to an RV. Uh, it said, and I actually have a first found you guys on your other channel, Two How Crazy nice. Campers. So if you're new to it and you don't realize, we do have a camping channel. It's two crazy campers. I'll put a link right over here. Two KK, of course. Uh, said Ocala National Forest. I really want to go there. And Lake Griffin State Park are Ooh. both near me. But of course, getting in, like you said, is not easy. Yeah. Ocala National Forest actually has a lot of spaces that are first come, first serve. Like I wanted to go there for Christmas with That's the boys. A nail biter. But it was we were doing five days with the boys, and I'm like, I mean, I can do a no a first come, first serve if it's you and me. Yeah. But this we'll was like the one work. trip with the boys, five days, Christmas break. I was like not going to chant Ocala National Forest. So you needed a plan. We needed, well, is what I needed a reservation. Said. It wasn't a plan. That's a plan. Yeah, but I didn't even have a plan of what time we were leaving. So it's not really a plan. It was a reservation. <laughs> okay, so if you're in that area, in August, 
we actually have reservations for Rainbow Springs State Park, which is not that far from that whole area of yeah. North and stuff. So maybe we can get together at some point. Send us an email. Uh, send it to Rachel. Rachel at two crazy ketos.com. You can tag Joe at two crazy ketos.com. Let us know and uh, we can let you know what our plans are because we do have some plans for being up in that area uh, at the end of the summer. Yeah. So, okay. Next one is from Oval. Hi, Oval. Oval said, I like to plan and also go where the spirit leads. Yeah. The best vacation my hubby and I took was going to a small town in New York, Quebec, Canada, down wow. through New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and back into New York. How beautiful. We had no idea where we were going. We'd look at the map the night before and decide where we're going in the morning. It was always full of surprises and blessings. How gorgeous. That's how we planned coming up, right? We sat down last night and said, where are we going to stop? Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. No plan. I think that that sounds beautiful. Yeah. I would love well, to go. She had a plan to make a trip, but not to where she to She knew she was going to be in the New England That's area. a good compromise. We're planning on a trip here, but I'm not going to tell you where we're stopping because I haven't made that plan yet. Next one is from Emily. Hey, Emily. She said, I love doing these monthly challenges. Good. Gives me something to look forward to every month and keeps things interesting. And it helps us to know so many of us are doing this together. So you don't feel alone in doing things. It's very motivating. I do it because I enjoy like participating with everybody. Right. Like I love it. I love whenever we do things as a family and I love theme stuff. So yeah. like theme She's a theme person. I am all about themes. Like that's why I love Disney Our first so date much. Is a theme. Absolutely. That's why I like Universal so much because right. it's just like it's all themed out and that just makes it more fun. I remember when I went to visit my mom in New York, we were still dating. And you decided to have a theme for me when I came home and she broke into my house or I had the boys let her in the I, house. I did. And she painted my bathroom. Yes. And then laid... I'm terrible at it, by the way. Laid a set of hearts out as a theme for our date that night, right? Remember, yes. Do you remember that? Like everything in a heart with balloons everywhere. I do, because theme. She loves themes. Theme. Let's take a quick commercial break and come back with our Facebook comments. And we're back. Okay, so the first Facebook comment is from Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Sandra said, I need to get back on keto, and I'm struggling to start it. I'm looking for a plan to help me to not think about it. Any suggestions on how to get a good plan? I'd lost almost 80 pounds before, but I've been lazy this last six months, and the weight is coming back. I got tired of the same old foods. I'm dairy-free, too. Thanks for any suggestions. I think one-to-one. -one. Yeah, so great plan. Follow along with what Bronson's talking about, which is one-to-one. -one. You're going to eat one gram of protein and up to one gram of fat slash carbohydrates for what, for, in grams for however many pounds what your goal weight is. So, for example, if you want to weigh 150 pounds, you're going to eat 150 or more grams of protein and up to 150 grams of fat and carbs combined. Keeping your carbs as low as possible, we suggest between 20 to 30 total carbs. Now, that is not, you know, that we want high protein and low fat. We're no, not we're trying not to advocate advocating that. advocating high protein, low so, fat. Like it sounds protein's like very modified fat. Yeah, it sounds like it's 50-50 because we're saying one to one, like it's 50% protein and 50% of, of energy. But that's not what it is because that is looking at it from a calorie perspective. Right. So when you hear people talk about 70-30, that is from calories. So eat 70% fat from calories. That is what one-to-one -one really works out yeah. to be. So one-to-one, -one, if you break it down, works out to be about 65% of your fat coming, of your calories coming from fat and the rest coming from your protein. It works out to be the same because there are more calories in fat than protein. Right. What we're telling you to do is prioritize the protein because in the past, you would have somebody like us, we would have a five or 600 calorie fat fat coffee and then I couldn't before eat, we touched our steak. And I couldn't get all of the meat in and I need some protein. Right. You have to get your protein in. So all we're saying is eat the protein first, then eat the fat. Use the fat as a lever to continue filling you up. Yeah. You can eat as much protein as you want, trying to hit whatever your goal is. And then the fat, you can have up to that yes. much. You know? Now, it's also don't eliminate it because you do need to have some fat and utilize it. You're still hungry, eat a little more. Just don't exceed, for example, 150 grams of fat. If, right. you, if you're still hungry and you've reached your fat goal, eat a little more protein. That'll satiate you. Exactly. Okay. 
So the next one is from Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Jessica said, is it okay to be under your carb count for the day? Yes. I can't seem to get my macros on point ever, and it's really stressed me out. I'm using carb managers, so tracking is easy, but I can never seem to get enough carbs for my calorie count, or I'm way over my carbs for my calorie count, and I always seem to be over in my protein and fat. I'm trying hard to balance them. I don't know if it matters. Okay, so we were just talking about this. Yeah. Go as much as you want on protein. The fat... And the carbs is a limit, not a goal. You don't have to hit those. Keep your carbs as low as possible. If you only, the less carbs you have, the better. If you have a day where you only have 10 carbs, that means that you're going to, that's less energy of carbs you need before you get to the fat. I mean, you need fat because there's some fat soluble vitamins, but you don't need carbs. Right. Like our body doesn't require them to unlock the nutrients in our food. Yeah. So if you only eat five carbs a day, that's great. Your body gets rid of those five carbs and immediately turns to the fat. If you eat 30 carbs, it's going to use the carbs of 30 before it gets the fat because- you have the oxidative priority and your body is always going to use the carbohydrates before it turns to the fat. Yeah. So yeah, don't worry about it. If you're not hitting your count, your carb goal, that's fine. If you're not hitting your fat goal, that's fine. Just Hit don't your keep your fat goal. low and it's okay to exceed protein. Next one is from Ellen. Hey, Ellen. Ellen said, funny non-scale victory. Oh, I love this one. When I get home, the first thing I do is go to the hen house and gather the day's eggs from the Yay. chickens. It was very windy, and I wore a very lightweight top, but plus I had groceries. I got eight eggs, we have ten hens, and I'm holding them close to my chest to keep the wind from blowing up my shirt with one hand while carrying the groceries in the other. Wow. As I started walking to the house, I got almost walked out of my jeans. They kept slipping lower and lower, and if I didn't figure something out quick, I was going to moon the whole neighborhood. Oh, my lord. Meanwhile, I'm still worrying about flashing them because, you know, the wind and the lightweight blousey shirt and all. So here I go, hobbling along with the grocery bag, hand tucked in the tight at my waistband to keep my pants from falling oh down, gosh. and the eggs clutched to my boobs to keep my shirt from flying Oh, up. I love this. Needless to say... I broke out the needle and thread and took up the waist of my jeans last night. Wow, Ellen, that may be the best non-scale victory that I have heard lately. (laughs) Like I, keto, like here's a public service announcement. Keto may cause you to moon your neighborhood. That's a good one. Be careful. Next one is from Jamie. Hey, Jamie. Jamie said, hello, fam. Blue Dove here. Was worried I came off too negative during the live tonight. No, you didn't. No. So I wanted to share this. I am not adding fat to my meat, not even cheese tonight. But I also feel like most that meat entries on Chronometer are not accurately representative of the macros of final cooked meat. It's hard to be sure how much fat I'm really getting. Swapping the ground beef entry for one that specifies cook and rinse. Get to be a lot closer, closer to hitting the protein, but it is still over on the fat. I'm definitely comfortably stuffed though. Oh, yeah, so the ground beef and, and that kind of stuff, when you cook, unless you are capturing that fat and then repouring it over your food, you are losing some fat. The protein is the one that you're not shrinking, so you don't have to worry about that. For us, we just, whatever it is, it is. So, like, you know, we buy 80-20 or we buy 90-10 ground beef. We usually buy whatever is on sale. Sometimes we buy tend to buy in the 90-10 a lot. Because it still has some flavor and it allows us to add some butter. Because I want to be able to add some fat somewhere. Right. 80-20 is almost perfectly one-to-one. And now I run out of room to add fat in other places. But, you know, if you lose a little bit of fat, that's okay. Now, one thing you can do, like we make our pizza. We pour it back we over. We pour it back over. Tastes so we really take good. all that grease and we pour it back over. It's like over. a finishing oil. you well. know you're getting it all. But that's the only way. It's the same thing with bacon. You cook bacon, unless you're taking that bacon grease and then reconsuming it, you're not eating as much fat as a strip of bacon has. Right. Unless you can actually go and weigh it out and figure out that. But nobody's got time for that. So next one's from Nicolette. Hey, Nicolette. Said, I feel like I need to do a significant push with OMAD, but I'm new to intermittent fasting, so I'm not sure what macros I need to hit. Last time I did OMAD, I was so comfortably bloated, it didn't seem worth it. I was uncomfortably bloated. What should I focus on while doing OMAD? I need to kick my weight loss into a higher gear. Get all your protein in, whatever your protein goal is, and then use fat to continue to fill you up. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you're trying to get whatever your caloric goals are or whatever your energy goals are. Otherwise, if you do it for too long... You're going to slow down your metabolism. You're training your body to only live on this much. So when you stop omatting and you go back to eating 
what would be a normal energy intake, then your body's like, well, we don't need this much. Right. It's the biggest uh, thing that make people make mistakes of when it comes to uh, alternate day fasting, where they say, okay, well, I'm only supposed to eat 1,300 calories a day, so they eat 1,300 calories every other day. That's wrong. The right you way to do it would be to eat two days worth of calories. Yeah. So when you're, when, especially when you're omadding, what you're doing is when you're fasting, you're fasting. When you're feasting, you feast. You eat it all. If eating it all takes an hour to do or two hours to do, you eat it all. That's that's how you do it. But with that said, I have to just kind of interject that don't just OMAD because you're like, I want to fast track right. this weight loss. It may just take time. Right. I mean, that we're, we're, th- we're what, three, four years into this journey and, you know, we're still learning about our body. So don't put, like, pressure on yourself and, you know, make yourself uncomfortable right. just because you're trying to, you know, make it go faster. Yep. So our next one is from Holly. Hey, Holly. Holly said, when are good times to test for ketones with a blood meter? Good question. Um, I've read about the Dawn Effect. However, I have insomnia, both forms. I have trouble falling asleep and staying asleep. My nighttime routine often looks like uh, I go to sleep at 10 p.m. I wake up at 1 a.m. Can't go back to sleep till 5 or 6. Aww. Then I wake up at 10 or 11 a.m. So my second question is, is the Dawn Effect applicable time from when I wake up or in the early morning hours regardless of when I have slept or not? Usually it's when you're first really getting up and getting your day going. Uh, the best time to test your ketones is a couple hours after you've been up for a little while. So, like, if you're saying you wake up at 10 or 11, so I'd say noon to 1 o'clock before you eat. Don't test your ketones after you eat unless you had a really fatty meal, but then you're really getting a false sense of your ketones because yeah. a really fatty meal will boost your ketones up. Right. Whereas a higher protein or a one-to-one meal will probably lower them down. And again, those are just extra ketones. So... The best time is before you eat because that's where your body has been producing them and it probably has a bunch of them extra in your body. Okay, so we have one more and that one is from Blaine. Hey, Blaine. Blaine said, never give up, never surrender. Yes, Galaxy Quest. The scale may be moving, but look at the rest of your life. Yeah. Are your clothes fitting better? Are you more flexible? Do you hurt less? Are you sleeping better? Can you walk longer and further? Are you breathing easier? When I started keto in 2019, I was pushing 440 pounds. I couldn't walk to shop. I couldn't stand for five minutes. I couldn't easily release the emergency brake on my truck. Now I can do all these things. Oh, wow, Blaine. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to cry, but that is awesome. That is awesome. And yeah. I'm just really, really thankful that you stuck with it. I'm so proud of you. And thank you for sharing that because somebody needed to hear that this week. Just don't give up. Don't surrender. Like, I understand that, you know, especially this time of the year, people like really buckled, buckle down in January. You know, maybe they're still going, you know, hard in February. By March and April, they're like, I'm tired of doing the right thing. I just want to, you know, dump a hundred pounds in a week. Like it looks like it promises in all of the magazines. And it's, it's so hard. I can remember getting into the, the checkout at the grocery store and seeing like, you know, woman's world. And it was like, what was the the latest thing? And everybody on the magazines looked like they dumped 50 pounds in the first two months. And here, you know, I still, the scale was reflecting that I hadn't lost that much weight, even though, you know, things were happening inches wise, but it was just so disheartening. So yeah, just don't give up. Things are happening. And thank you, Blaine, for just reminding us of that. So that is going to be this week's Q on the Couch. Now, again, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so that you're notified when all of our different videos come out. Also, (laughs) don't forget that Wednesday we will be doing our live stream with Bronson Nant, hopefully. Hopefully we find a place that's got internet on our drive back from New York. And then on Thursday, um, once again, we have plans to do our live stream somewhere from on the road. We'll do our best. And so make sure, again... Make sure, that's why you want to hit the bell button so you'll be notified if there's any changes or anything like that. Also, make sure you go join our Facebook family group. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, there are 110 more Keto on the Couches, which we're going to put a link for right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm going to put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye! Bye!